All right, hey everyone, King 77 here from acsyndicate.net here to continue my full review on the Galaxy S3. Be sure to check out part one if you did not. I'm getting into a lot of more awesome features with the Galaxy S3 in this part two. There's so many to go over that uh, I had to make this into two parts as usual. So uh, right away, I wanna get into some awesome Samsung features. Uh, right, you can obviously pull down the notification bar, tap on that settings icon, it takes you into settings. You have a theme settings. There's many different things you can do uh, under sound. You have all your basic ones, volume, vibration, haptic feedback, uh, display, you have a bunch of different ones actually. You have uh, Smart Stay, which will disable the screen timeout if device detects your face is watching the screen. So it uses the front facing camera to detect your face and it sees if you're looking at the screen, it will not uh, basically put your phone into sleep mode or hibernation, whatever you want to call it. Uh, another thing you can do, which is great, is you'll see up at the top of my device up here, you will see I have a battery percentage right next to the battery. There's actually an option to check that. So you'll see I turn it off and it goes away. Um, so you don't have to install any custom ROMs, anything like that, any certain changes to get that battery percentage up there. You can do it right away. One thing I do wish they could have done was put it on top of the battery icon so it doesn't extend uh, those icons, I wish it could have been on top of the battery icon. That's just a little personal preference there. But although uh, a really great uh, thing of Samsung to include uh, within their device itself. So that would be a nice display setting. Wallpaper, of course, you have LED indicator. You can have a charging one. You can have low battery. Whether you want it to let you know when there's a low battery or a missed event, you can change those. Uh, motion is where you're definitely gonna get all these awesome features. So I wanna kinda really go in depth on these. Direct call is probably my favorite one uh, by far actually. So direct call, here's an example of what it is. Um, what it does is I believe it uses your proximity sensor or motion to determine whether you wanna call someone. So what you can do is actually go to your messaging application and go inside a message. So here's my message with Google and I believe it, it I don't know if it uses the proximity sensor, let's go ahead and try it. What, what you do is you put it up to your face while you're in the message, you just bring it up to your face let's see if it uses the proximity sensor if I do that I don't think it does I think it uses motion so uh, what you can do is I'll bring it up to my face it vibrates and it calls whoever is um, that message is to so you'll see that uh, it called Google right away um, whenever I was in that message so I just brought it up to my face it vibrated letting me know it was gonna make that call and it did it's one of my favorite features they included with this uh, with this touch whiz and which is with this device I'm really glad they did it's very very handy also, you have Smart Alert, which catches missed, missed alerts, calls, and messages. What it does is uh, basically I, it detects when you move your phone and it vibrates it again, letting you know you have a missed alert, which is great if you're um, expecting uh, an important call or an important text message. Um, tap to top, you can go to the top of the list. Tilt to zoom, what you can do is press on a picture and tilt it and it zooms in and out. Uh, pan to move icon, you can move icons to another page. You tap on the icon on your home screen and tilt it and it goes between the two pages. Uh, pan browser images, you can same thing with the, the uh, picture, you tap on it and zoom it in and out. Shake to update, scans for devices. Turn over to mute and pause. So you can mute incoming calls just by flipping over your device. That is uh, a nice feature as well. Uh, palm swipe to capture, which is a way that you can actually take a screenshot. You just kind of put your hand across the device, either left to right, right to left. It's kind of difficult. Um, you'll see it just did it right there. So I do have a video on how to take screenshots. Um, you can palm touch to mute pause. So those are all your motion activation features. Uh, again, direct call is by far my favorite. I don't use the um, the one where you, if you're looking at your screen, it uses the front facing camera, the, the smart stay feature. I think that's kind of a novelty. I'll just kind of change my screen timeout if I need it longer. I don't really think that's a big thing to have. That's just a personal preference though, but it is there if those of you that do like it. You have power saving options, uh, storage. Of course, you have uh, a certain amount of storage. I have a 16 gig version, which only gives you, I think, 13 gig of storage total out of the box. So, I mean, it's obviously a little bit less, but no big deal there. Battery. Um, Battery life's a huge thing, of course, that uh, a lot of people want to know about. Battery life is phenomenal. I, I, I can't get over how great battery life is on this device. Um, is by far up at the top for best battery life on phones I have used. It lasts probably from immediate, moderate to heavy use, probably about 17 hours a day uh, with, I mean, three hours screen on time, even with 3G. Um, not even always on Wi-Fi, probably half Wi-Fi, half 3G. It works, uh, it, the battery life is phenomenal. So if you're looking to get a device with good battery, highly recommend the Galaxy S3. 
Otherwise, the application manager, pretty self-explanatory. Accounts in sync, you have many different ones you can add, a Samsung account, Facebook, you can add different accounts, chat on, Dropbox, Google, Exchange, so you have a bunch of different ones there that you can add. Uh, location services, of course, I talked about GPS in my part one review. Security features, you do have a face and lock feature. You have swipe, motion, uh, face and lock. Face and lock works well. Um, I'll probably do a separate uh, re review of the face unlock feature, um, face and voice, which can you can uh, unlock with your face and your voice, which is great because then you don't have to just worry about someone putting some kind of picture up to your face, up to your uh, front facing camera, which of course you have pattern, pin and password, all those high security ones as well. Here's where you can actually change those lock screens, the lock screen options. There's actually a lot of lock screen options, which is great. So shortcuts, you'll see that you tap on the shortcuts, it will take you into them. You can just customize it, tap on whichever one you want to change. Um, and you'll see it changed to, there you go, busy box right there. Um, but uh, yeah, so you go through your applications, find which one you want to change it to, and it changes to it right away. Go back to your lock screen, you'll see it is back on whichever one that you want it to be on. Uh, information ticker, you can have news, stocks on your home screen. Camera quick access, which is kind of cool. What you can do is actually, while your screen's uh, locked, you can press on that uh, lock screen and tilt your phone like you're going to take a picture and it directly takes you into that camera application. That's a nice uh, lock screen feature right there. You can have clock, uh, weather, ripple effect. You can turn that off if you don't like it. Wake up in lock screen and wake up commands. So those are some nice lock screen options that you do have. Other than that, all your standard activate device developer options etc so that's great uh, very uh, very cool lock screen it's one of my favorites I do really like that ripple effect that you do have and such uh, music wise uh, has the music hub which is bloatware to me but uh, it has a nice music application we can go into the music player I only have three songs um, a few classical songs which I will play in a sec so you can check out the speaker uh, but you have playlists albums artists music uh, music square um, and folders. So you have a bunch of different uh, different little settings there, but we can go ahead and go into a song. Let's go into a Mozart song. I will turn it all the way up. Just kind of give you an idea of what uh, it sounds like, the speaker sounds like. You can swipe through your songs on the album covers right here. Um, you can kind of obviously skip through with the button itself. Um, you have uh, Sound Alive which changed kind of your your sound depending on what, what you like. Uh, but overall speaker quality, it's good. It's nothing great. It's pretty standard so I mean speaker quality is okay. It's, it's fine as you heard. It sounded just fine. It's not like it's blaring. It's not like it sounds terrible. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the browser though. Uh, internet browser is great. I love this internet browser very much. Um, I, I haven't even installed Chrome Beta yet. I just I do really like the Samsung stock browser. It, it's great. Uh, as you saw, I can pinch in. Once it's fully pinched in, it takes me to my tabs. I can add a tab. Um, it'll add add one. Go to this home page. I can add an incognito tab as well, which doesn't uh, really save any any history, anything like that. So I can go to those tabs, scroll through them. Um, I have a bunch. I, I, I honestly don't know how many you can have open. I haven't really pushed it to the limit, I guess you could say. Let's go ahead and load up a page, acsyndicate.net. Um, I'm on 3G at the moment, in case you are wondering. Uh, loads up acsyndicate.net. Uh, pinch to zoom is great. Uh, very fluid, very smooth, no checkerboarding effect at all. Uh, you'll see it. Uh, let's go ahead and go into an uh, article. So. Come share my Verizon Wireless Confusion. It's actually a very good article, so check that article out on acsyndicate.net. Um, one thing that I really don't like, it doesn't really have a text wrapping feature within the browser, which I really don't quite understand why they got rid of it. Uh, you'll see when I try and zoom in on this article, it doesn't text wrap uh, the article itself. It stays there. So that's the one kind of thing I don't like about it. You can obviously put it in landscape mode, which, which helps a lot, but it's just really something that I don't like about the browser at all. Uh, the removal of the text wrapping feature, which is probably going to push me to install a third party browser eventually. Uh, but again, everything is very smooth and it works great. So uh, n no complaints about fluidity or anything like that within that stock browser. All right, but anyways, let's go ahead and get into the camera application. Um, I know a lot of you guys wanted to know about this. So I'm going to go ahead and take a quick picture of a somewhat close up of this pen. 
So let's go ahead, it, you'll see it focuses, I can take a picture, I can take a bunch of different pictures, there's zero shutter lag, you'll see I'm, see how quickly I'm tapping on that uh, icon, it just took a ton of pictures right there, you can tap on here, go to your gallery, obviously it's not going to be very good quality since I was really shaking it and uh, moving it and taking them very, very quickly, but you'll see if you let it focus in, take a picture, turn, Take a picture, turn, take a picture. It, it doesn't take too long to focus in. It does a very good job. Um, it works well and obviously farther away uh, pictures as well. So uh, overall the camera application is great. I do really like it. It has some cool features as well. You can change it to the front facing camera with that two megapixel front facing camera. You'll see, hey, hey guys, um, there's me. Uh, change your LED flash. You have uh, shooting mode, so you have burst shot as well. What you can do is take up to 20 shots, and you'll see uh, you take a shot and press and hold, and it takes however many you want. It processes it, and uh, you can actually turn best shot on, and it'll choose your the, the one that uh, it thinks is the best one and deletes the rest. So there you have it there. You have burst shot. Uh, you have HDR smile shot. You have panoramas, obviously when you go through and make a take a panorama shot, of course, you have a bunch of others as well. Uh, settings wise, you have a crazy amount of settings within the Samsung camera application, certain flash, shooting mode, scene mode, timer, uh, resolution, white balance, ISO, anti-shake, GPS tag, you can turn that on and off, which is great. I love being able to turn that off. I hate GPS tag with uh, photos. Um, I don't like that at all. Otherwise, you can take 1080p video, Turn, in, uh, turn on your video recorder, and of course you can take 1080p video. Uh, I do have a test video, so definitely check that out. I'll link to that, uh, take that video. And while you take video, so you'll see I'm recording video at the moment, you can actually take pictures. So you'll see I just took a picture, you'll see I took another picture. So you just tap that camera application, camera, camera icon, and it takes a picture. So stop that recording. Speaking of video recording though, what you can do is go to your apps, and inside your apps, go to your video player. And this is amazing. So go inside your video player. The video player app itself is cool. You'll see it plays uh, basically all your videos um, within basically this application, and it gives you a quick preview of them. So I go into one of them. Here's actually the test video I made right so here outside. Really to deal with, uh, any wind Let me go ahead and turn that down. Sorry about that. Um, and while you're inside this video, let's say you're watching a movie or something. Uh, obviously you could be watching a movie. It looks great. You'll see on the screen that looks very amazing, very vibrant. The screen's great. Uh, but otherwise, um, while you're in this application, you have this, the couple icons, obviously a full screen icon, but this bottom right one is the pop out player. So let's tap that icon. When you go to it, you'll see this video is playing while you're doing anything else you want on your phone. So let's say I wanna check my texts. I go inside my text messages. Obviously you can move this around and you will see that uh, I can send some text and obviously audio is still playing. There you go, so you can zoom in. And uh, audio is playing while you're still doing this. This is one of my, the coolest features of this phone actually. It does hinder performance a little. You'll see as I'm scrolling through it is kind of laggy, which is understandable. You're obviously watching a video while you're doing all this stuff. So overall though, if you want to browse the web, read an article while you're watching a video. And if you're watching a video, you get a text message, just tap that pop out, reply to your text message, tap on it again, it goes straight back into it very seamlessly, no lag at all. So again, that's a really one of my favorite features, the pop up video feature on the Galaxy S3. Something I pointed out earlier that I love is pressing and holding on that home button and using your uh, recent running apps. I do enjoy the how, the how much it looks like stock ICS. You've got these four applications that you can see um, and it's great. So it's something I like. You can swipe away certain ones that you don't want on there. You can remove them all. I love having that button, the remove all button. So just remove them and you go back into it and you'll see there's no recent apps. Um, that's a really great feature. It's very smooth, very fluid, definitely much better than HTC's Sense 4.0 multitasking, which I really don't like. All right, so go, let's go ahead and run some benchmarks. Um, I actually just rebooted my device. You'll see no, no recent apps at all. So I just went ahead and rebooted it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and run Quadrant Standard first. So let's go ahead and go into the application and I'm gonna run a full benchmark. So here we go hops into the full benchmark again this is a dual core processor with two gigabytes of ram uh, these are actually i actually asked you guys in a poll on facebook what uh, your favorite benchmarks were and it was quadrant standard and antutu um, i myself really am not 
a huge relier on benchmarks. I prefer the real world performance. Um, so we will see now what it looks like. And it looks great, at least from my perspective. Very smooth, very fluid. All the images look great, around 60 frames per second there. The one with the planet is the one I, I care about the most, considering some devices have a hard time handling it. Uh, but uh, it looks like it's obviously very great on this device, no issues there. And there we go. So benchmark results, let's proceed. It sends them and here we go. Our device is a 4414, so that is what this got. This is completely stock, of course, so that would be uh, just about what it gets, 4414. Um, otherwise, let's go ahead and go to the Antutu benchmark. I will uh, hop into that right away. I haven't ran actually ran this one yet. And close this, and we are gonna go ahead and do a test and we are gonna do a default all test and start it. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it run through. It actually does take a bit of time, so I'm gonna let it run. Here's more of the video portion of the Antutu benchmark um, that some people like to see in action, see what it looks like, see the different colors. Running very smooth, of course. So there would be that video test there. All right, and here's that Antutu benchmark score of a 6,040, which is very good, of course. So there are the benchmark results. I know a lot of you guys wanted to see them, and there they are. Other than that, though, I think that's just about it. I believe I covered everything in my notes that I wanted to cover. Uh, again, a really great device, really smooth. Um, I mean, obviously, you can get rid of this launcher if you don't like it. You can install a third-party launcher from the Play Store, uh, having your stock ice cream sandwich launcher experience, which is no big deal at all. Uh, but overall, I wouldn't say it's a revolutionary device, but it definitely includes a lot of very cool features that uh, are actually probably a very good step forward, um, definitely. And with all these features, you still get great battery life. You're getting all these features, but uh, your battery life is not suffering. It's still good. So uh, if you're looking to buy one of these, I definitely would recommend it. Um, I wouldn't hold off uh, for whatever you think is going to come in the future because then you'll be stuck doing that always. So um, if you're thinking about buying the Galaxy S3, it's definitely recommended by me. Uh, I really love all the many features of it. I, I, I definitely, uh, I, I don't mind TouchWiz. I would prefer a stock look, but uh, again, to each his own. Uh, that's a personal preference of mine that I can I can stand TouchWiz and, uh, and use it very well. But that's about it. So uh, let me know what you think. Be sure to leave a comment. Be sure to subscribe as well. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. All links will be in the description of the video below. And as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up.